In small groups, Ukrainian soldiers are crossing the river Erpin, joining the month-long battle to keep the Russians out of Kyiv. It's bad, said Pavlo, one of the last civilians leaving. Children are dying, everyone is dying. Only a few other civilians are coming out of the ruins. Slava emerged, desperate to save her dogs. Thousands of civilians came this way when the war started, but now this whole area has been swept up by the fighting. Ukrainian troops have broken all the Russian ground attacks here so far. So now Moscow's men increasingly are using the weapon they trust most, heavy artillery. We were here about three weeks ago and there is a massive difference. Look at the devastation around this area. It's been hit very heavily. The shelling makes all movement here dangerous, so the command posts are underground. The Ukrainians say the Russians have only a toehold in Erpin. Outside, they've been pushed back. You say they can't get into the city. Why is that? Apart from your own resistance, what do they lack? Commander Oleg said the Russians don't have the combat power, his men are hitting their supplies, and in Kyiv there'd be armed citizens shooting from every window and door. They know the Russians want to break their will to resist. Among the men here, one who came home to fight after 25 years in Britain. Everybody fear for their lives. But uh, most important, it's a freedom, freedom of our nation and future of our nation. What should the British do? Thanks a lot to British, they helping a lot. And uh, I believe they can support us, not only with weapon, but with uh, good political decisions to help to stop the war. He came over with Shane Matthews, a former British soldier, who's joined the war as a medic and a sniper. He says this is the worst he's seen. I have seen a lot of civilians killed, yes. We witnessed a car with four people in uh, not 10 days ago, get blown to pieces. Uh, it was an entire family evacuating from the city behind us. It took a direct hit from a 155 mil artillery round. So nothing left? Nothing. No. You could have swept them up and put them into a bin liner. On the road to Kyiv, which the Russians have tried repeatedly to seize, the forest either side is burning from the shells. Back in the city centre, more volunteers were waiting to be transferred to the long fight in and around Erpin. It was quiet, a little tense. They knew what would be waiting for them. Katrin had a few minutes with her son. She's a sniper. She said his name is Nikita. He's 18 months old. I will kill, she said, to protect his future. The war has changed everything for these volunteers, for all of Ukraine, and the world now feels more dangerous. Whatever happens in the battles that these soldiers are going to fight, it's clear already after a month that this is the biggest threat to international peace and security in decades. And the consequences, the impact of this war is already being felt beyond the borders of Ukraine. The younger ones were born when Europe was hopeful, in the 1990s. The men in their 60s grew up when this city was part of the Soviet Union. It was time to say goodbye. The old drumbeat of the Cold War, of the risks of confrontation between the big powers, is back for a new generation. The buses left for the front line. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Kiev.